<laughs> January and February, the real cold months down here. They say you can see a man up there with a top hat and he's taking notes as he looks out on the streets. And if you go back in market history, there was a man who sat in that office who fits that description perfectly. I started doing the Market Ghost Tours because it was a combination of so many passions for me. Storytelling, writing, research, and of course an audience. We do know that there are some children that are still kind of hanging around the stables, especially in the Down Under where we're going next. There's a spirits of several children in the different shops down there. It was a glass cabinet, it was shattered. And there was uh, doll furniture all over the floor. And there was no explanation for what happened. No break-ins, no earthquake, security reported nothing. If he feels agitated or threatened, there is um, strands of beads that are right behind you that will come off the wall. They'll literally just fly when he gets really upset. I think the market is known for its character. And so when I start to describe characters that are a part of this market, people light up. They used to have this ghost they called Charlie, and he'd um, kind of sit on their second level. They'd sometimes place a table for him on New Year's Eve, and then down below in that window, that bricked up window, there's their kitchen, and there's a, um, there's a woman like hiding there and cowering. My personal mission in doing the ghost tours is to connect people on an intimate level with the history of this land. During different renovations along the waterfront, they have found native graves. So all of this land that the market is on and that we walk on is a real sacred place in history.